Coming up on Arirang News, the number of coronavirus cases in South Korea approaches 5,000 with the death toll at 29. Another briefing from the government due any minute now on what the authorities are calling a critical phase in the outbreak. President Moon Jae-in apologizes to the Korean people for the insufficient supply of protective face masks, ordering more of them to be distributed and fairly. He also puts government agencies in operation 24 hours a day. And the World Trade Organization, along with other agencies, warns that the coronavirus could have a substantial impact on the global economy. The damage, it says, will start to show up soon in data on trade. It's 5 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thanks for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting. We start with the latest on the coronavirus outbreak in South Korea. The number of confirmed patients with COVID-19 is approaching 5,000. With the details, we have our Hong Yu on the line. Yu, what's the latest? Devin, this morning, there was another death from the coronavirus, bringing the domestic death toll up to 29. The latest death is a 78-year-old man who was being treated in an intensive care unit at a hospital in Daegu after he had tested positive for the virus. He had been in hospital since Sunday, and his conditions worsened on Tuesday. He is known to have had diabetes, pneumonia, and high blood pressure. Currently, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases stands at 4,812. That is an increase of 600 patients since midnight. According to the Central Disease Control Headquarters on Tuesday, of the new cases, around 520 patients were in Tegu, bringing the total number in Tegu alone to 3,600. The surrounding Gyeongsangbukdo province saw 61 new cases, bringing its total to 685. There were two more cases in Seoul. The total number of the cases in the capital now stands at 98, so Seoul is edging ever closer to 100 cases. All right, so those are the numbers. How is the government assessing the situation and what's it doing now to fight this outbreak? South Korea's health authorities say the community-based spread of the virus in Daegu is serious. And considering the virus incubation period of the followers of the Shincheonji religious group, the next one to two weeks will be a critical period in containing the spread. Until now, health authorities have contacted 99% of the country's Shincheonji followers and tested those with symptoms. Outside of Daegu and Gyeongsangbukdo province, only 1.7% of them have tested positive. Now the government will conduct more tests than other citizens in Daegu. They have tested 11,000 people in Daegu in the last seven days. The government will also secure more treatment centers by early next week so they can hospitalize 2,000 more patients. That's it for now, and I'll be back with more details in our later newscast. Back to you, Devin. All right, our Hong Yu reporting there. Thank you. Now, President Moon Jae-in has apologized for the difficulties Koreans have had in buying face masks, despite the government taking measures to ensure they're available. He also said that the country is in a critical phase, calling on government ministries to shift to a 24-hour emergency system. Kim Min-ji reports. President Moon Jae-in told the public he was sorry for the shortage of face masks, ordering the government to solve the problem as soon as possible. Speaking at a cabinet meeting on Tuesday, Moon called on officials to consider all measures to ensure the masks are supplied fairly. The government has started to supply designated retailers, but people are still finding it difficult to get them. The president also called on government agencies to operate 24-7, saying the country was at war against COVID-19. He said the situation has entered a critical phase, pointing to the continued rise in the number of new confirmed cases. President Moon said that the crisis is reaching a peak in the southeastern city of Daegu and in Gyeongsangbukdo province, noting that the situation completely changed with the mass infections linked to the religious group Shincheonji. While Moon said the country was swiftly carrying out testing and revealing the results transparently so as to block the spread, he stressed the need for stronger measures to help with quarantine and the economy. The president said the government will provide 25 billion U.S. dollars worth of support, both direct and indirect, to spur domestic consumption and ease the burden on small business owners, as well as to support quarantine and treatment efforts. 
He called for the swift passage of a supplementary budget bill, which the government plans to submit to the National Assembly this week. Kim min ji Arirang News. Meanwhile, the Pentagon says it's prepared to deal with all kinds of scenarios, including the coronavirus becoming a pandemic, and said it sent additional medical personnel and equipment to its troops in South Korea to help fight the outbreak. U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Mark Milley at a joint press briefing with Defense Secretary of Defense Mark Esper on Monday said personnel and supplies, including masks, gloves and gowns, were sent at Esper's direction with priority distribution going to South Korea. Esper said he's been holding daily meetings with Pentagon officials for the past six weeks to come up with measures to deal with the outbreak. Milley said they're considering changes to military exercises in regions other than Korea. International organizations are warning countries of the global economic impact of COVID-19. For South Korea, the OECD has slashed its 2020 growth outlook to just 2 percent. Kim Yo-sun reports. The head of the World Trade Organization says the COVID-19 outbreak may have a, quote, substantial impact on the global economy. Addressing the heads of delegations in Geneva on Monday, Roberto Azevedo explained the issues will begin to show in trade data released in the weeks to come. However, he added the WTO ministerial meeting scheduled to be held in Kazakhstan in June will proceed as planned, stressing that a successful outcome will be crucial to enhance the credibility of the international organization. The International Monetary Fund and the World Bank said in a joint statement on Monday that they stand ready to help member countries address the human and economic challenges posed by the outbreak. They said they will focus on poor countries that have weak public health systems. The European Central Bank also became the latest central bank to hint at monetary policy action in order to mitigate the potential economic fallout caused by the outbreak. The vice president of ECB said Monday that the bank will be closely monitoring all incoming data, warning of an impact on euro area exports, as well as a disruption to global supply chains. Meanwhile, the OECD has slashed its growth outlook for South Korea this year to 2 percent amid the rapid spread of the coronavirus in the nation. This is down from its previous forecast of 2.3 percent in November. The OECD, however, forecasts that the country would experience 2.3 percent growth in 2021, unchanged from its previous estimate. The OECD also stated that South Korea could face a relatively larger impact from the outbreak as it's closely interconnected to China, with the world's second largest economy accounting for a quarter of all Seoul's exports. The OECD said governments must act immediately to protect their people and businesses from the spread of the coronavirus. Kim Yo-san. Arirang News. Time now for an in-depth look at the market action today. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, global strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, thank you for joining us at our new time slot. Thank you very much for having me. Well, a, a major swing Monday on Wall Street, where stocks were up around 5 percent. The rise were, was a lot more subdued, though, elsewhere. Uh, what's the story in the global markets? Yes. Uh, as you said, U.S. market has recovered quite significantly yesterday. Uh, Dow was up 5.09 percent. S&P was up 4.6 percent. Nasdaq was up 4.5 percent. Uh, if you look at the from the peak to bottom of U.S. market correction, um, all these three indices were down by 16 percent. So uh, this recovery was something something that needed to come through. Uh, but still, it's not even halfway recovered yet. Um, the reason for that recovery is because of the uh, Fed willing to provide sufficient support in all means possible, including the rate cut possibilities, as well as the quantitative easing. Uh, along with that, other central banks were talking about possible rate cuts and liquidity injection, including the ECB, as well as the Australian banks, uh, central bank, uh, as well as various other uh, central banks, including uh, Japan's. Um, if you look at the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia, they cut the interest rate by 0.25% to 0.5, the record low level. Uh, we are expecting that the U.S. Uh, Fed will cut anywhere between 0.25 to 0.5% in uh 
in March 18th of the FOMC meeting. Uh, with that, uh, continuation of liquidity is there, and therefore uh, it will probably counter the concern about the coronavirus uh, impact to the global economy. Uh, but however, though, most of the other markets uh, in terms of the recovery in prices were quite timid uh, because uh, we're still uncertain about the uh, phase and the speed of the spread of this disease. Yeah, and that Fed meeting uh, around two weeks away now, but uh, following the rally on Wall Street, Korean stocks were also up uh, a little bit. Mixed, though, some other indexes, uh, not the Kospi. The Kospi was up, the Kosdaq, not so. Uh, but what's driving the trade here in Seoul? Right. Uh, after the news of U.S. market recovering that much, uh, Korean Kospi also did a very strong uh, start. Um, it started with almost 2% rise in prices uh, for Kospi as well as the Kostak. However, though, um, very much throughout the uh, day, uh, it kind of uh, declined. Uh, if you look at Kospi, it ended with only about 0.58% rise. As for the cost tag, it was actually down by 0.13%. Uh, probably there were maybe two reasons for this. Number one is, is that um, the foreign investors will continue, uh, continue to be a net seller of this market, uh, selling about $300 billion won worth of cost B, uh, and also $220 billion won worth of cost tag. Um, they are a slight buyer of the futures market, but overall, foreign investors continue to be the net seller of this market, putting pressure in the prices. Uh, in addition to that, uh, if you look at the uh, overall the COVID-19 new patient rise, uh, we were hoping that will reduce down in the future. But uh, as far as today is concerned, it added another 600 new patients. Uh, so speed of the rise continues to remain at 600-plus uh, level. Uh, which puts some pressure and concern about the speed of the spread of the COVID-19 in Korea. Um, obviously, we need more aggressive measure from the government in order for the market to show a very strong recovery. As you know, BOK did not cut interest rate last time. Well, in the meantime, the OECD has lowered its growth forecast for Korea's GDP this year, now at 2%, which, frankly, some others might see as optimistic. But uh, you mentioned government measures. Uh, they're pursuing some measures to keep the economy going. Is that the right move? Uh, and what kind of measures should they be? Yes, I mean, I think that's something that must be done. Uh, I think that the uh, Korean government is too focused on the property price rise at this point in time. Uh, if you look at the consumer debt level and the consumer's uh, conditions, we do need other uh, boosting measures, including the rate cut as well as the supplementary budget. Uh, if you look at the Bank of Korea, they were not really preemptively doing anything at this point. Uh, they were saying we should wait. Um, but if you look at the level of the decline in terms of the service sector as well as the domestic consumer sectors, uh, it's down by 50 percent plus uh, just this month. Uh, we need more aggressive measure for, from the government on both sides of the fiscal and monetary policies. Hopefully with the Fed lowering interest rate and most of the other economies lowering interest rate, uh, we will see uh, BOK following through. Uh, we do anticipate another, uh, at least another 0.25% cut in interest rate and also supplementary budget worth at least 15 billion uh, U.S. dollars, uh, or 15 trillion won or so. Uh, hopefully uh, this will have some uh, bearing to the mom and pop shop that are suffering the most, the restaurants and various other service sectors. Uh, if that happens, we can achieve that 2% growth. Um, at this point in time, without any policies, 2% uh, has been very optimistic. I mean, last year was 2% uh, uh, growth. With this kind of decline, we're, if we get 1% growth without any policies, uh, that is a very good number. Uh, so we need the boosting measures to see that number to uh, be achieved, 2% growth rate this year. Got it. All right, Mr. Yu, thanks so much for coming on today and sharing your insights. We always appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Now, uh, South Korea's gross national income last year posted its slowest growth in more than two decades. The Bank of Korea says income per capita was just over 32,000 U.S. dollars, down more than 4 percent from the year before. The BOK blamed the drop largely on the strengthening U.S. dollar in 2019, which was up nearly 6 percent on year.
However, the country's annual on-year GDP growth in 2019 remained unchanged at 2%. The BOK has downgraded its growth outlook for this year to 2.1 percent in light of the coronavirus outbreak. And consumer price growth in South Korea remained in the 1 percent range for the second straight month in February. According to Statistics Korea, the country's consumer prices rose 1.1 percent on year last month, slowing down from the 1.5 percent growth posted in January. The agency said the coronavirus outbreak limited price growth in the service sector to just 0.4 percent, the lowest increase since December 1999. Prices of agricultural and fisheries products edged up a little, while gas, electricity and water prices rose 1.6 percent. Industrial goods prices jumped more than 2 percent. And that does it for this hour. Thank you for watching.